Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master. Welcome to this video. And this video is basically an introduction to a, an implant placement dilemma that I had in my practice, which I posted online. And I was actually expecting to get some feedback on a very basic question, where an implant should be placed. So I gave uh, two options, A and B. And I asked uh, the surgical master community, my uh, all the forums I'm I'm participating in, which one would it be? And the results that I got were amazing to me. I, I was I was actually shocked to to see the responses because in my biased opinion I was expecting something totally different. So I created this video to give a little bit more information, gather some more answers, and then I'm going to create more videos with the results, with some of the discussions. And I know it's going to be very, very interesting, very fascinating to see how dentists answer actually a very, very simple, basic question about implant positioning. So this case started as a hopeless upper first molar with a history of periapical surgery, periapical infection, and the prognosis was hopeless. And I extracted the tooth and planned a delayed implant replacement. So I'm going to skip forward to after the site is healed. I uh, had a CT scan. I imported all the data into the implant planning software, in this case, Simplant. And I was starting to virtually plan the positioning of the implant. And I immediately saw that this is actually a very simple case. There was enough restorative and surgical space, meaning there was enough bone width and bone height, the sinus was in a, in a far enough position to allow me to place a wide diameter implant in a, in a uh, probably 10, 11.5 millimeter length. And I had a lot of leeway in terms of the surgical placement. I then created a virtual wax up seen here in yellow. So I could plan a trajectory of an implant that will give me a screw axis positioning and I then went back to the different views in the CT scan to allow me to finalize the implant trajectory. Now, on purpose, I'm not showing you too many details because I'd like to focus on the main question of this video, A or B, and this way we can all stay focused and, uh, and, and hopefully give a good answer. So as I was doing this, I started to notice that because I have a lot of surgical space and bone width and the sinus was at a good position, I had more than a couple of options on how to place this implant in screw axis. And this is the beauty of the virtual world where you can plan your implant positioning and you can study the case and all the small little details that make a difference before you actually do the surgery. So I love doing this and I spend enough time until I'm 100% sure where I want this implant positioned. So it came down to two options. Uh, the first option of the implant positioning was a position that was perpendicular to the occlusal plane, well positioned within the bony envelope and far away from the sinus and the adjacent roots. And the second option was placing the implant parallel to the adjacent roots. Again, in good bone, in a safe position. So both the perpendicular to the occlusal plane and the position parallel to the adjacent root, both were in a good restorative position with screw access. So I called one option A, the other one B. Again, I confirmed that I have a good implant position from a restorative point of view, that it's safe uh, surgically, and that I have a screw access position for both options. Now, this may sound so trivial to you, so basic, and you may be wondering, why am I even discussing such a simple case? It's obvious. Well, I, you know, I had a dilemma, and I, I don't think it's that obvious, because both options seem to be reasonably good, restoratively, surgically, and here I am about to perform a simple procedure, and I still have a dilemma. So when you have a dilemma, it's always good to consult with your friends, and I certainly have a lot of contacts and, and friends that, are, that know much more than me. So I asked several prostodontists, some of them uh, big lecturers on the, on the world stage, uh, very good general dentists that I work with, 
I asked several uh, lab technicians, master technicians that have done this a million times, and I basically presented them with the same thing I just showed you in the presentation. Should it be perpendicular to the occlusal plane? Should it be parallel to the roots? What are the advantages and disadvantages? And I made these, these drawings, and um, it's very interesting. They all said something slightly different. And, you know, honestly, I was shocked. <laughs> I was expecting for most of them to say, hey, Ziv, what are you talking about? It's obvious. It's, uh, it's A, because of these reasons. Oh, it's B. It's obvious. Why are you even asking us this question? But all of them, without exception, you know, had to think about it and have to basically, there was a moment of silence. And some say it didn't matter. Some say it was A or B for these reasons. And this is when I felt that we are on to something very interesting here. If I'm asking doctors that are well experienced in implant dentistry, surgery, and restoratively, and I'm presenting them with a very simple case, and the answer is not immediate, that means that we may not know it all. We may have some questions and dilemmas. So what I decided to do is to create a survey, and I brought it to the surgical master community, now in the thousands. I also posted this survey on social media. And the first day or two, I already got like 800 doctors uh, filling out the survey. It's a quick survey of basically one question. Is it A or is it B? Without too many details, and that's done on purpose, not to confuse you, basically telling you, you have all the bone in the world, you have all the safety in the world, you choose what is the best implant positioning. Should it be perpendicular to the occlusal plane? Should the implant be parallel to the roots? And you know, if you like, tell me why, but really give me the answer A and B, and the results were amazing, and I'm still gathering answers, and that's one of the reasons I created this video. I want to get more answers, as many as I can, so I can then create more videos with the results and create great discussion and allow us to understand this very, very basic, yet super important issue. Because if we don't know, as implant dentists, implant surgeons and restorative dentists, if we don't know the answer to that, and I'm not saying there's a right or wrong, but if we don't have a clear understanding of why we're doing it, what's the point? Why are we even doing guided surgery and planning cases and presenting beautiful cases if we don't know the answer to a simple question after over three decades of implant dentistry, at least in the United States? So if you're watching this and you're part of the surgical master community, meaning you're getting my emails every Tuesday, you did get an email with the survey with a link to SurveyMonkey, basically a link that you, uh, takes you to the survey you can answer and submit it. Now, if you missed it, email me. I'll send it to you, I'll send you the link. The link is still active. And if you're watching this video on social media, I'm going to try to add the link with this video or uh, very close to it. It's all anonymous, by the way, in case you're concerned. Uh, you know, we are learning as we go. We, uh, you know, if you think that you know everything, uh, you, you know, you're probably not watching this video or other videos. So if you kept watching, you're probably interested in this topic. So if you didn't participate in the survey, uh, please do. It'll be great uh, for you to follow up and see where you're at. Number two, it's going to create immense discussion uh, from a different angle compared to what you've seen so far. And once I have the results, I'm going to post at least uh, two or three more videos just on the discussion and the, the points being made for each option, A or B. And I'm also going to publish the results that, that so far are amazing to me and very, very interesting. I'm sure you love uh, hearing about that. So leave me some comments below. I would love to know your opinion. Definitely participate in the survey. Feel free to share this video with other dentists. And I look forward to sharing the A or B question in the next videos.